Hello, in today's video I'm going to be looking at the TIS-258 Digital Multimeter from Toolstation. So, let's have a look at this multimeter. This is my old one. I've had this for 10 years. It was a gift from Maplin. It's a Sinometer M830B. Unfortunately, recently it's discovered some problems. As you can see, I've got nothing connected to the leads and it's still showing a voltage. I've tried changing the battery, the square battery inside and to no avail. There is a variable resistor inside the multimeter which I've tried adjusting but it doesn't seem to make any difference. So I'm guessing the uh, unit is starting to fail or has already failed. It's been a good workhorse, 10 years. I, only, I think it was only cost about £9.99 from the Maplin originally anyway. The now were gone store sadly. So, I've got a new one. It, it sometimes says hyper voltage as well, HV or high voltage even now nothing's connected so I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it if anyone knows what's wrong with it let me know so I went ahead and purchased this one this is a TIS 258 digital multimeter from uh, the shop called tool station here's some of the specifications of the unit now on my old multimeter it didn't have a proper continuity test and it didn't have a buzzer which I've uh, after watching videos such as uh, I don't know, Mark fixes stuff, uh, mymatevince.com and etc. I wanted a multimeter myself that was cheap, but it had the buzzer on circuit testing. So, I got this one. Now, this has got the added bonus of it's also got a temperature sensor. So, this is the temperature probe. We'll look at that in the video in a minute. So, let's take it out of the bag. So, you've got your two red and black, and you've got a temperature pr sensor on the end. Also, I've got the main leads. Here they are. There they are. Red and black. These are apparently are rated for 600 volts, but I'm not so sure I'd want to be plugging this into 600 volts. By the way, at the time of recording this video on the 6th of June 2021, this this multimeter cost £20 or £19.99. So it's not a high end thing, it's just a cheap one. There is even cheaper ones than this, very similar to the one I showed at the start of the video, but this one's a bit more advanced. So you can see there's four red buttons at the top. There's a kickstand on this, so you can stand it up. Just pull it up, pull it up. Don't try not to snap it, it is quite flimsy. There you go, it can stand up. But to be honest, so could my old one. So that was a feature of my old one as well. There it is, there's a the kickstand on that one bit stiff now after all this time but it does stand up so there you can see them both side by side now some of the features on my old one do still work so I'm not going to be throwing it away I'm going to be keeping it of course no point in throwing it away um, I've had it for a long time but I'm planning on using this new one more more now I've, I especially wanted it for the uh, continuity feature with the buzzer because sometimes you're working with circuit boards and you you, that, you can't really see the screen and you, you just want to hear if there's a circuit or if there's any broken traces. So here's a Kodak Penland Special 9 volt battery and an AAA battery. These are rubbish batteries, you can get them in packs of 20 for about a pound. <laughs> well, the, the AAA ones anyway. And uh, yeah, So let's test these batteries first of all. I'll grab the leads. I'm just going to do this off camera because it's a bit awkward where I've got the tripod. Plug it into the multimeter. One thing you've got to be aware of is I've got caps on. So you've got to pull them off first. Just just dust covers. So get the one at the black one and uh, get the one at the red one. Plug it into the multimeter. So I'm just doing this behind the camera. There we go. There's the red one off as well. There it is plugged in and uh, let's do some multimeting testing. So I'm brand new to this multimeter, multimeter, it works differently than my old one so I did, I haven't read the instructions so I just went straight into it and uh, I didn't realise at the recording on the video that I was testing in uh, AC mode so it wasn't giving very good readings. So you, you've got to actually manually press a button on this version of the multimeter to change it from AC to DC. 
which is the top left button. As you can see, I haven't figured this out yet. I've added the voice later, so I'll figure it out in a minute. I did try at first changing to a different voltage setting, but it's, oh, I wasn't aware that it was still on AC mode. Alternative, alternate current. At first, I thought it was faulty. Right. So that button is, gives it a backlight as you can see you can't see the screen on camera but you can in real life just a bit off exposed for the camera so that's your AC and your DC button there the first one so let's change it to DC and uh, let's try testing the battery again we we'll tried a 9 volt battery a bit awkward to do no it does seem a little bit high I don't know if that's normal 9.7 volts on a Kodak battery. I think it'd be closer to 8.99 surely. So maybe the uh, multimeter needs calibrating or maybe it's just because it's a cheap one that's how it is. Uh, try let's try uh, what we're gonna try I forgot what it was let's have a look. Let's try continuity so you've got to change it to continuity mode with one of them buttons as well and there we go that's what I wanted for a while a multimeter that will do a buzzer tone as soon as you complete the circuit so that's pretty uh, pretty useful for me because I'm sometimes fixing circuit boards and stuff or trying to and it's good for testing uh, sometimes I pick up old computers and sometimes I've got battery damage and it's a good way of testing the uh, traces so yeah, you can see it's working with this screwdriver, of course it will. So, let's try try out the temperature sensor. So you've got to unplug the uh, main leads and plug the uh, temperature probe in into the same sockets that we had them in. Black goes in the middle, red goes on the right. It's all explained in the instruction manual, which I didn't read. Now, because it's still on continuity mode, it's obviously completed the circuit, so let's change it to the temperature mode this is in Celsius, you might be able to change it to Fahrenheit, I'm unsure okay so this is a boiling hot cup of water I just boiled the kettle and poured it in my colour changing Super Mario Brothers cup and uh, see how accurate this is so we're getting about 80, 80 degrees Celsius so yeah probably pretty accurate to be honest yeah. so that's a useful feature that my uh, older multimeter didn't have a uh, temperature sensor built in that's pretty neat so as you can see as I've took it out it's starting to cool down again down to 43 degrees 42 so I'll take the temperature probe out again If I can find them behind the camera, put the uh, cables back in. Well, I've got this Dell charger here. This is for my uh, Dell Inspiron i5 laptop. It's supposed to be about 19 volts. Now, it has an auto cutoff feature if it detects a short on this power of supply. So. I think w what was happening was it was shorting out because I was touching the uh, plus and minus together by mistake because the uh, centre pin is very uh, close but it's very fine it's very easy to accidentally touch the uh, centre to the outer, outer case of the uh, power so I wasn't getting very accurate readings but it make sure I put it on DC mode I think I wasn't getting very accurate readings with this I think it was short in shorted mode. We have to unplug it for a few seconds and plug it back in. Uh, so this isn't this is a very bad example of a test here. I just thought I'd in, still include it in the video. Yeah, getting not much of a reading on here. It's because I'm still in a, oh, it's turned back into AC mode again. 
Now the, the multi printer does have a hold button as well so that's very useful if you want to take a reading and then you've got a form to fill out or something and you, you want to write down, write down the readings without it resetting back to notes as soon as you uh, move the uh, the uh, leads from the uh, multimeter sorry the leads from the source such as a battery or the uh, main supply yeah I didn't do too well with this power supply I wasn't getting anywhere you're just showing 13 volts which isn't right it should be about 19 well I think this power supply is a 3 pin wire actually because one's for sense to the laptop to tell it that it's an official power supply or not so I might have been doing it wrong anyway so yeah you can see the battery is slightly high at 1.67 is that right for this multimeter do you think or is, is it calibration out there might be a calibra calibration setting or a calibration pot inside I do not know yeah on the eye side again 9.74 volts I would have expected a cheap battery like that to be about 9 volts or 8.9 well, nine. it might be because it's not under load I don't know but I'm sure my older multimeter didn't do it like so I so you can hold it there that's the hold feature as I was just demonstrating about so as you can see I've disconnected the battery and it's still got the reading might be useful if you're in a work environment and you want to uh, save the display so you don't forget it and you have to move somewhere else in the building and you want you need to fill out the form that will hot keep on that display until you either rotate the, the wheel or if you press the hold button again so yep some useful features that wasn't on my old multimeter with this one um, I'm quite happy with it to be honest um, I can probably forgive it for them high readings if there's no way of adjusting it or it might be normal I don't know maybe my old multimeter was wrong but yeah as you can see with nothing plugged in at all it's still showing a voltage so yeah thank you for watching if um, anyone's got any suggestions on how to fix my old one then please let me know in the comments but yep yeah, that's it for this video bye for now I'm gonna give the the new multimeter a nice 8 out of 10 I'm pretty impressed with it for the price